There is this beautiful result in abstract linear algebra that says that a vector space, a finite dimensional vector space, is canonically isomorphic to the dual of the dual. The isomorphism between the vector space V and its double dual is defined as follows. For every V, I want to map it to an element psi of V that is in the double dual. So it's a linear map from the dual space to the field F. And how do we define psi of V? Well, psi of V takes as input elements of the dual space, and it sends an element of the dual space to that element of the dual space evaluated at the vector V. And one can show, and I have shown this in some of my videos, that this map, this natural canonical map, is an isomorphism. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is the following question. Somebody asked me, what is the inverse of this map? And that is a great question. And in fact, once we have proved that this is an isomorphism, the surjectivity of this map tells me that every single element of the double dual is one of these. It's surprising. It's surprising that every map, every linear map from the dual space to F is actually just evaluated at one fixed element V. But this is what the theorem says. That isomorphism, that is what it says. So the inverse map is as follows. Take any element of the double dual, then it comes from one V, so you send it back to that V. So let's turn this around and let's prove, without having proved yet that isomorphism, let's prove that the double dual is actually all formed by elements of that shape. So what we want to show is that every element of the double dual is one of those psi of V. So let's do that. Let's start with any basis of the finite dimensional vector space V, and uh, let's define psi of EK to be those elements of the double dual that are just uh, evaluating elements of the dual at EK, at those basis elements. Now, I claim that those maps, the ones that are just evaluating at basis elements, they're actually a basis of the double dual. For, suppose that there is a linear dependence between them, then I can evaluate at any phi, and I get this equality for any phi in the dual. And if that linear combination is zero, then, well, I know what psi k of phi does. It evaluates phi at ek, and phi itself is a linear map from v to f, so I can use linearity to bring everything inside of phi, and now that, those uh, lambda k ek, is a vector v, that it's in the kernel of phi for every phi. But if every element of the dual, every phi vanishes at v, then that element v has to be zero. That's something you need to perhaps check yourself that uh, the only vector that makes every single element of the dual vanish, that is the zero vector. And, uh, but if that vector is the zero vector, the coordinates with respect to that basis must be all zero, and therefore, we have reached the conclusion that the original linear dependence between the elements psi ek was actually just a trivial one. So therefore, those are linearly independent. So we have shown that the psi ek are linearly independent. There are n of them. The dual of the dual has the same dimension of v, which is n. Therefore, that, uh, that set is a basis of v star star. That means that any element of the double dual is a linear combination of those psi eks. Then, what is psi evaluated at phi? I use the linear combination of the psi eks that gives me psi evaluated at phi, and uh, psi ek evaluated at phi is phi evaluated at ek. Now, I use the linearity of phi, and that tells me that psi is just evaluating phi at this fixed vector v. And therefore, psi of phi is just phi of v for that vector v. So every element psi in the double dual is one of these psi of v. And therefore, the inverse map to that canonical isomorphism goes as follows. Take any element from the double dual that has to be a psi of v, so just simply send psi to that element v. And you can show that this is a linear map, and it's injective-surjective, so it is an isomorphism of vector spaces.